Okay, hello everybody. Uh, me and Andre, uh, we want to like present some real problems Crew faces for a long time already, and uh, there is no easy solution for them yet. And uh, we just want to go over them. Describe. Uh, I would describe uh, the problem, and then we discuss it. And it's probably okay if we don't finish all of them, but I will. I'll try. Uh, so the first problem is uh, about restoring process trees. Uh, it is complex because we have some resources which can be only inherited and can be created by specific processes like sessions. Uh, there are all kinds of chilled sub reapers and nested pit name spaces and set an S. So we can create really uh, hard to understand trees, like uh, hard for crew to restore. Uh, and here are two examples. On the left is like session cycles uh, three, I call it, and on the right, pid name spaces and set names set an S call. Uh, we can create uh, sessions like this when one session is split between multiples uh, pid name spaces, and there is even one process here. Can't see, for example, group leader here. Uh, so. This visibility problem also contributes to uh, like the hardness of this all. And first, I want to present probable solution for it, and then we probably discuss it. Uh, uh, one solution for this problem of complex uh, resource distribution between process tree is uh, just to prohibit such resources. So we can just get rid of inherit only resources in Linux kernel. Uh, for good, and just <clears throat> add, for example, for sessions, a syscall uh, to attach pre-existing uh, sessions, and same for process group. We should probably do it uh, with PDFD support, because uh, I already shown that there is a visibility problem in PID name spaces. And here is it. Uh, probably the good thing about it that we don't need to invent any complex algorithm in Crew. We can restore the tree in some way and uh, just deal with resources later. Uh, and probably a bad thing about it, but not so bad, I believe, is that it can bring security uh, problems uh, because, yeah, we can enter Previously, we didn't have this possibility to enter pre-existing session. We can get access to terminal and do some nasty stuff. But uh, here, I want to hear from you if you have any, like, uh, see any more security problems. Any, you have any other ideas how to do it, how to deal with complex sessions, uh, and do we have plan for any other inherit-only resources in kernel? So if anybody has some ideas about it, please come in. Not seeing any hands yet. Okay, uh, maybe someone will come up uh, offline because yeah, it's it's probably a hard thing to understand from start. I did a couple of years before whole presentation for this, explaining different uh, cases, how we deal with it in Creo for now, and it's really complex. One of ideas was this one, uh, implementing some auxiliary tree, which can help us to know the order of creation of processes, real order, original one, uh, without any reparenting involved, and that would help us understand which processes could inherit uh, what resources from which other processes. Uh, but I tried to make it in kernel and it didn't work. I didn't have any uh, comments about this patch. Probably it's too, uh, too high key. Uh, I also tried to do it in user space, but the problem is it's not the way that Crew works. Normally, Crew just saves uh, some state of processes which it sees and doesn't really care uh, about the history. And now we need some monitoring daemon 
to report to CRIU some states, uh, external states to help to resolve those uh, sessions. Like here on top, you see the session uh, cycle tree, and on below, you can see the Kaba tree, which kind of resolves uh, the history, and you can understand the history. But yeah, it can probably be killed, and we we'll lose all this history, and that's it. It's not very good solution to have a monitoring demon here. But if no ideas, probably we should just do this and there is nothing. Uh, if uh, no one wants to talk about this one, let's go to another one. Uh, another one is uh, really close. We have uh, this. We have a problem with PID uh, username spaces and clone tree and uh, setting process IDs in CRIU. Uh, this means that when we want to create a process in CRIU, we normally ha uh, can have multiple PID name spaces for it in the container. And uh, it means that we need to set right PID on all levels. And CRIU, uh, should also like create those speed name spaces properly too. Uh, should create them owned by proper username spaces so that the old topology is preserved. And that means that uh, for clone tree, it is a problem because for clone tree to have uh, ability to set bits on all levels, we need to be capable on all levels. It means we need to be in a uh, really privileged uh, username space at the moment. And to create PID namespace in it, we need to be in the same username space or lower, uh, which created the PID namespace now. And that means like we can't do, we can't be in the two places at the same time. That's why it's uh, not working for us. It would be good to somehow fix it. So we have one uh, solution, uh, actually two, but one is not so good. Uh, uh, the first one, good one, is to allow to create uh, PID namespace in it completely separately from uh, the PID namespace itself. I mean, to create PID namespace first, then be able to enter this PID namespace from the site with, sit with set an S, and then to create PID namespace in it for it. Uh, then we would have any username space we want when we create PID namespace in it, and we won't have this problem with clone tree. Uh, this is quite a general approach, like doesn't look too hacky for me. We just uh, allow to uh, enter namespace before it is like completely initialized, like we allow to fork this init from the site. Uh, the problem with it may be that we need to be really careful not to allow like multiple processes at the same time trying to create a need or um, multiple processes inside this PID namespace. So here is a draft patch. I didn't send it to LKML yet because it needs some testing, uh, but it's, it can be done. Probably it's a good solution. Maybe we should proceed with it. Uh, Bad solution is the one I sent maybe a couple of years ago. Uh, it was just straightforward, allowing clone tree to have another argument which gives you information about another username space. So you are in one and you have another in arguments and you can set a uh, PID namespace owner based on the second one, something like this. If anyone has any questions or want to discuss those problems, it would be nice. Okay, we can probably proceed, and uh, if you have anything to say at the end, uh, we can discuss it. Uh, we have two more problems. Uh, I thought I would be very fast to cover just basics, and we will discuss, but if there is no discussion, I can talk about them in more detail. So there is another problem, which is uh, CPU mismatching. Uh, when you uh, migrate 
any process between uh, different CPUs, you can have this thing that it read CPU ID instruction on one CPU, thinks it has some features on this CPU and uses them. And then you move this task and it continues to use those features, but they are not available anymore. That can lead to different kind of undefined behavior, crashes, sec faults, memory corruptions, or maybe out of bound accesses like with X save, because if X save size changes, and you call X save, uh, unlikely call X save uh, instruction after migration, you can uh, just get memory corrupted because it would overflow your buffer you gave the uh, X save to proceed with, and it can corrupt something. So we, in our practice, at some point had those different strange corruptions we couldn't understand and we saw like ah different uh, cpus okay um, we have a solution for this problem actually it is quite a hard one uh, it is implemented in kernel in openvz uh, not in mainstream obviously uh, it acts similar as we act for vms so for vms we can uh, set special uh, um, mangling of CPU ID uh, for the process, so it can't see full uh, set of the node, it can only see like restricted CPU uh, features. And uh, the same thing can apply to container, but the problem is we need to somehow understand, yeah, this process belongs to the container and we should uh, like override CPU ID for it. Uh, so the main problem here is probably in mainstream to identify the container. And with that, probably some persistent tagging would help, which would be discussed in later talks. Uh, so yeah, we have the CPU ID. Uh, also, there is a question. Is it enough to just overwrite CPU ID? Like, what if the process will still use some CPU feature uh, we don't show for this process, but that's probably uh, a bad thing. And normally processes don't do that. Like normally only libc reads CPU ID and then proceeds with all CPU optimizations using C current CPU features available. So here's the patch. Uh, it would be nice to hear if someone else maybe needs this functionality in Linux? Do we need container migration with between different CPUs? Do we need to port it? Or maybe some other way? I hope I didn't miss, uh, you didn't miss anything because I, I it showed loss of connection for some time. No, I think that's fine. We've, we've been uh, okay. hearing things just fine. Here. Okay, cool. Okay, uh, and let's proceed to the last uh, one. Andrew's got something. Okay, cool. So, how it's implemented in OpenVZ? Is it in the form of C group or? Uh, in OpenVZ, we have this C group which says this is a container. Like we have virtual environment C group, which basically says, uh, like, this is my. Uh, root namespace, uh, root user namespace, root pid namespace, everything. So it knows like the boundaries of the container. All the information is collected together, C groups and stuff. And like this way, we will also always know that process belongs to the container and we can override CPU ID. Uh, actually, I believe there is some uh, thing here, uh, thing, uh, see, uh, sorry. Uh, a really hard thing here because uh, actually CPU ID is important when you do exec. For example, when you enter the container from the side, like NS Center, it's you, you are already in container, but still shouldn't uh, feel the CPU ID change yet. But that's somehow resolved. So if we are I hope the, the question kernel, was about this. If we are talking about the upstream kernel, it will be like another C group uh, controller. 
Yeah, maybe. Maybe it's some like tag to uh, say that those are specific containers which we can match in kernel and uh, by this, uh, like, I overwrite the CPU ID. But yeah, C group is probably better. Not sure. Maybe namespace. So, uh, another idea how we can implement this, we, we can implement it like a part of seccomp. And we, we will install like seccomp rule for the init and then all process will inherit these rules. Yeah. I have a question. To which extent do you want to emulate it? Because like CPU ID is not a small thing. There is a lot of leaves, there is a lot of MSRs that will control behavior and you can possibly at least configure like newer CPUs to like uh, Shed of uh, X save size and or somehow like fault on MSRs, uh, RDMSR and right MSR, but well, there is, or at least on X86, there is a lot. And well, if you talk uh, like not only about X86, but also or about uh, ARM or power, then there is also a lot of CR and uh, feature stuff that basically are different on different CPU models. And that seems like uh, an approach that will lead nowhere. I'm not sure it's all unsolvable in some regard. Yeah, it, okay, it's not yeah, kind of first. Whether this is something that a virtual machine should do versus a container, like a KVM already has a lot of logic to be able to handle CPU IDs and all these features. And at what point do you say, okay, this isn't a container anymore, it's a VM, you know, when you're, when you're doing all the CPU ID stuff, MSRs? Yeah, I, I would agree that uh, CPU ID is really big. It's uh, like almost uh, impossible to understand all the bits like and uh, do really good masking here. Um, for now, in OpenVZ, for example, we mask only part of it. Like we uh, digged into some uh, like areas, and we found that like those would definitely be needed. Uh, I won't say you now. Like you need to go into the patch and look uh, more. Uh, but yeah, we did it user configurable, so it's it shows the override into the user space and the user space decides what what it wants to override uh, currently. Okay, you've got two more minutes. Okay, uh, if we have no questions here, let's discuss the last one. Uh, the probably the most pressing here uh, problem because uh, Crew, when it dumps pages, dumps memory of container, it doesn't have currently information about uh, copy and write uh, between those pages of different processes. And uh, we can dump like one gigabyte container, restore it, and get six gigabyte container because there are a lot of shared pages which just uh, was not recognized by Crew and restored uh, uh, in a bad manner. Um, that's why we kind of want from kernel to have some interface to understand which pages are copy and write shared with which pages. It can be KCMP something to compare two processes like and get some map between those pages. Uh, maybe it could be uh, page map scan, maybe it can be some similar thing to uh, soft dirty bit, like we can mark the pages we already saw and uh, propagate it through uh, copy and write somehow to see that those pages were already dumped off from somewhere, something like this. 
Uh, so if anybody has ideas like uh, what Cisco we need to implement, uh, what way is the best, please share it. But not share it for too long, we have that time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. But yeah, you can still come back offline and uh, share your concerns. So I think the page map scan is the best choice for us. It's only like the question how to find out what, uh, with what pr process we share uh, call pages. And maybe uh, crew need to like pass the PID uh, of a process that we just think that we may share some pages. And then uh, in response, we will see, okay, we share some pages with this specified process. Um. All right, that's it for this one. Yeah, Thanks maybe so it needs to be.